What's up, everyone? Welcome back to the Collider Studio presented by Saratoga Spring Water. I have the team behind Talk To Me here right now. I'm obsessed with your movie. I love the Midnight lineup in general. Your concept, I can't get out of my head. Very well done. Oh, thank you, thank you, thank Thanks you. Thanks so much. That's awesome. I don't know if you guys have noticed, but Miranda Otto is next to me. It's a pretty big deal. <laughs> <laughs> That's Miranda Otto, everyone, and we're here. We're excited to be. It's actually my mum, so <laughs> yeah. just watch out. For uh, what are you? Are you still in character? <laughs> <laughs> Drag him. <laughs> <laughs> All very important elements of the movie, I promise you. Uh, for my directing duo, I have to give these honors to you. I know about Talk To Me. Anybody who sees it at Sundance will know and never forget about this movie. Our audience does not know what the film is about just yet. Can you give me a brief synopsis of the movie? Talk To Me is about kids that use demonic possession to get high. That is our... Uh that's a pretty good description. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That is average. Incre yeah. <laughs> it's incredibly accurate, short and sweet. I love it. For the two of you, getting a first feature off the ground is pretty much a miracle. So when you jump into this, what did you think was the first step to making that happen? And now, having gone through it, would you recommend that step to another filmmaker out there? Or did you find something more effective along the way? Yeah, the best first step is to find uh, good producers. And that was uh, the first step was um, reaching out and contacting Causeway. We could not believe they responded. It was like, yeah, like what? Yeah, like of course they responded, and that was the big first step. And they, they like guided us and let us know how to, you know, because I'd, I'd already reached out to some studios and I said I've got a script, and they're like, this is not how you approach people. And I was like, oh, so we had to find. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so we got yeah got told off by the studio, but then yeah, we we figured out how to do it. and We got there via producers and managers. What if you don't have a producer or manager, Danny? It seems very. Yeah. Well, no, we didn't have a manager at that point. Yes, okay. but yeah. Uh, I think that to get a film off the ground is you have to, you could have a proof of concept or a short film or any sort of, you just need to prove that you can direct. I don't know, we definitely didn't prove we could direct. I don't know why they gave us the movie, but. <laughs> oh, please. Wait, correct me if I'm wrong on any of this. You just brought up studios, and I think I read this somewhere, that you did have some interest from studios, but you decided to make this movie independently, which can be a very scary decision to make. So can you walk us through that thought process? Uh, yeah, I, I guess that we were starting to develop it with them, and they were trying to sort of steer it towards a more conventional route where there was a lot of exploration with our main horror item, our main horror prop. And I just wanted the kids and the characters to be out of their depths and not know what they were in, you know, what they were in. Oh God, I screwed up that question. In on, in on, in out. on, it, in yeah. on out. I didn't know, yeah, I wanted the kids to be out of their depths and not um, understand what, I really can't answer this question. <laughs> <laughs> Man's has had no sleep. Well, yeah, we've had no yeah. sleep. None of us have. We're all in the same level. This is a safe space <laughs> right here. I'm fast. so sorry, Collider. <laughs> but, but, and ultimately, also, creative control is very important to us. Yeah. And that's something that, with a studio, you get more money, uh, you know, up front, but that, c that control can get taken away from you. And that's scary. And we knew that with Causeway, who we did it with, that we'd be safe. And they would protect, they put the film first over everything. Yeah, and then freedom of cast as well. Not to have to go for uh, A-listers. Like, we wanted to find, like, realistic. These are awesome. all A-listers. Yeah, what are you talking about? Now, uh, well, at the time. <laughs> yeah, so it was about trying to like, have the freedom to cast whoever we wanted. And, um, yeah, take the script wherever we wanted and just have the freedom. So, so what is the value of that money if you don't have the creative freedom to do what you want? Yes, that's right. Yes, yes, yes. So for everyone in the cast here, I read a whole lot in the press notes about how important authenticity was to these characters so can you each tell me something that's purely your own about your character something that wasn't on the page but you wanted to be in them on screen an asshole <laughs> <laughs> yeah that was my yeah but like a one that you want to maybe have a little crush on like you want to be their best friend but they're gonna be they're not gonna be very nice to you <laughs> yeah zoe brought his asshole nature to set <laughs> <laughs> It was very authentic. I had to dig for it. <laughs> Not to set to the role. Yes, thank you. <laughs> Who wants to jump in next? Uh, I don't know. Like, there's a lot on the page. I have to say, like, I thought the script was so well written. But um, I guess the main thing that I really loved about the character was the idea that, like, she was, she was kind of on it with them. Like, she was, she was tricky, and she, she put them through their paces and stuff. But she, she kind of knows stuff's going on, and I thought that was fun to play. Yeah, and that you'd want to hang out with Sue more than Jade because <laughs> she's well definitely yeah, the cool mom. A very aware mother, but sometimes in the wrong mark. But you know, she's clued in. She's clued in. <laughs> Sophie. Um. Yes. Mia is like so awkward. 
And I think that I'm quite awkward as a person, so I'd say that's quite authentic <laughs> to uh, to my personality. And that's what I brought to the character. <laughs> oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> If you're not a little awkward, you're probably boring, so better Thank off you. that way. Oh, that's the, ex I that's the that. excuse I use, at least. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Joe, last up. Um, well, I think, like, my relationship with, like, my sister in the film and then Mia and, like, just with everyone, like, I don't know, like, with my sister, I was, I could just easily use my real sister as a substitute for, for Jade and Alex, who wasn't here at the moment, what was great in the film. And... Yeah, no, it just felt really real. And I know Riley's a bit of a loner, and I guess I'm a bit of a loner too, so, yeah. <laughs> no, in a good way, in a good yeah. way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In a cool good way, a cool yeah, loner. Yeah, he's a cool loner. A lone wolf. A lone wolf. A lone wolf. Lone wolf. Lone wolf. Show the fangs. <laughs> <laughs> Can you sit over there, though? Oh, no. Miranda, I'm coming back your way. I've been a big fan of your work for a long, long time. And we have a new ensemble that if folks out there don't know their names already, they will soon. Even with all your experience being on this set, is there anything you saw one of the younger cast members do that made you go like, damn, if only I could go back in time and tell myself to give that a shot when I was first starting out? I was thinking like, damn, about everybody last night when I was watching the film. I just thought everyone did such spectacular work. Um, God, I go back and tell myself, I don't know. I was just really blown away by everyone's performances and, you know, how much Danny and Michael had worked with them beforehand. I was only there for like five days shooting or something, so I just came in and did my little bit, but these guys rehearsed for ages together and really worked on their characters. And yeah, I just thought they had, it, it is such a great sense of authenticity and that, that really comes from Danny and Michael and the way they work and they're, you know, they've got a good bullshit meter. They, they know when it's, <laughs> when, it, when it's not real. I feel like a lot of films out there don't have the luxury, especially when they're independently made, to have rehearsal time. So can you guys tell me something that you discovered about the story or character during that rehearsal period that proved pivotal? Yeah, there was just days where we had to get... 10 minute scenes in two days. So we had to get into the space and, and block it out because otherwise we just wouldn't have been able to execute it. And luckily our producer, Sam, was able to make the time in pre-production. We had a very small pre-production, but uh, she made sure to prioritize the, the rehearsals. And it was, yeah, it was amazing to be able to go into the space, block it out and work through the actors and find if there's any lines or beats that just weren't working for them. So it was like, a, it was a group process to go through those rooms and find out how, how, to, how to position people. It was like, yeah, a really collaborative effort. It was, well, yeah, so fun. Yeah, well, we did a, ourselves as well in the space before like, like, you just, like shitty little rehearsal yeah. room like with nothing <laughs> like acting, you guys and, acting like, out and, of and yeah. they came in and they said yeah well <laughs> yeah we did like pre-shoots and i think my performance was pretty good sophie it <laughs> was really good <laughs> yeah that was really, really good as the dog the kissing yeah. <laughs> But I also love how you guys all do all the curveball lines and stuff. Every time we'd be doing takes, they'd do like a curveball kind of take where they'd tell you to come in and say something different to try and throw people off and see if you can get an interesting reaction. And yeah, 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 like keeping uh, the actors on their toes. Like if you're, the scene is let them into the door, what happens if you don't? <laughs> and then see how uh, they're going to react to the character and you get cool reactions, genuine reactions. Yeah. And I think it keeps, you, it, keeps it fresh. And <laughs> We yeah. definitely did that to Zoe quite a bit. <laughs> so <laughs> can, you, can you pinpoint a moment when they did that yeah. to you and it really helped? Yeah, somebody said something pretty rude to me. <laughs> In a good way, I got a good reaction. But I think also like the way we shot it, which is what I love, it was so fast and loose. Like yeah. the boys just kind of, if we felt on the day like, there was something else we could say. The boys were like, yeah, go, you know? So it meant that, yeah, it made for, it was never boring. And I don't think we actually ever did anything remotely similar twice. <laughs> yeah. I have to follow up on that. Anyone can jump in on this. Can you give me an example of a scene when you did two like drastically different takes, like the most polar opposite ones possible and you had to choose between oh. those two? Oh. Oh my gosh, there's one, oh, it probably isn't the best example because we had to end up removing the scene. Uh, not because it was a bad scene, but because... Uh, part of the process. Yeah, part of the process, yeah, yeah, yeah. finding the rhythm. Uh, there was a character who, no, see, this one's pointless, isn't it? <laughs> no, not this one. <laughs> Duck it's mom. No, 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 I, yeah, no, 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 I've got one. Max and Mia, the, the, the mom, uh, sorry, the dad and Sophie. Uh, Sophie, is a, this is a scene that also got cut for, for reasons, but amazing performances. There was one where we had Sophie having the power in the scene, attacking the dad, you know, yelling at the dad and, and, and kind of putting him in his place. Uh, and he, and we had him not, you know, be powerful in that moment. It was Sophie. But there was one take, we did it like four times, and then one where we said, 
you snap back at her after she says this line. And he did, and he did it. And I think he had this aggression kind of, you know, creeping up. And when he, he went, boom, he's like, no, like, you know, kind of as a parent to stop. And it, it was shocking to you on set. Everyone, no one knew, even the crew, everyone's like, oh, <laughs> like they were getting told off as well. Yeah, so, yeah. So that was a really cool thing to see. And like that genuine reaction. And variations as well, like when you're trying to get the nurse. Like playing oh, different yeah, variations, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. Miranda oh. did some takes that scared everyone as well. <laughs> <laughs> there were some kind ones and some very unkind ones. <laughs> this is what physical media is for. We need physical media so we get all of these deleted scenes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I am absolutely obsessed with lore and movie Bibles and things like that. So I need to know, did the two of you develop like every little detail about like the hand, where it really did come from, what it's capable of, any powers that we maybe don't see in the film, but you considered. What, what can you tell us about that? Yeah, kind of even stuff? down to the to the writing on the hand. There's a lore and a story and a deep mythology. Even the spirits that are connecting with the uh, every character's emotions, like everything's really thought out and put through. And the mythology, hopefully, something we could expand on if we were able to do a sequel. Uh, yeah, but yeah, we wanted the characters to be out of the depths. We didn't explore it that much. We just sort of hinted at it with the characters. But yes, everything's ironed out, and there's a whole big Bible and there's lore. A big it's called the Mythology Bible, so we've yeah. got that. Yeah, it's Ooh. a big prologue. Yeah, it's a yeah. trilogy. <laughs> So I, I've said this a number of times today. We manifest things at this table. So if you say it, we're going to speak it into existence. Oh. Yeah. Sequel. 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 And two million dollars at the box office. <laughs> the table has come on, Kalina. Two million. <laughs> we make everything happen. Um, was it always a hand? And was the phrase always "talk to me"? Or did you ever consider anything else? Uh, to begin with, it literally just was a board. And then it was, it just, uh, uh, yeah, it came through the very, yeah, the, all the drafts and then finding in the film is about the connections between people, real ones and forced ones. And yeah, it's, uh, hands are a very big motif in the film. So it just felt really fitting and real. And um, yeah, Mia yeah. is rejecting the genuine connections. Wait, don't spoil too much. And I'm not going to say any more. <laughs> <laughs> There's a bunch of things on my list, and I'm like, should I push it this far or should I not? Sophie, I'm going to give this one to you and maybe to only you. Can you give us a do and a don't when you're playing possessed? Oh. You do it exceptionally well. Don't. Oh. Oh. I feel like I feel like you need to like rhythm. I think rhythm's really important. Like shifting of rhythm. Um and don't Oh, I don't know if there are don'ts. I think the whole point of being possessed is that you can do whatever you want and go as far as you want. And the further you go, the kind of better. That's probably the right answer. Yeah. <laughs> I feel like don't be embarrassed. Don't be, like, yeah. don't be ashamed. Oh, yeah. That's a good don't point. Filter. Yeah. There was, there was one, the montage, there's a montage sequence and we had all the actors yeah, doing lots of different spirits and things like that. We had the main ones we wanted to hit for particular reasons, but then also some other stuff that we played around with, which was a lot of fun. And like, Zoe, your, your possession is amazing, amazing. And you see it in behind the scenes, it's 10 out of 10. Speaking of not being afraid, not being embarrassed, for the cast here, can you give me an example, a non-spoiler example, of a time on set when something intimidated you, you were afraid to do it, but because of the environment that your co-cast and your directors created on set, you had the ability to go there with it. I think I can answer. Mm. Um, well, Danny and Michael approached me about like doing stunts, and then I was like, it was like interesting, and I was like, oh, like do I do it? Like, well, am I gonna mess it up? And then like, well, Danny and Michael just spoke to me about it, and like, I mean, I didn't want to be like them. No, I'm not gonna do it. You know what I mean? So I was just, like, and then they were supportive, and then everyone like everyone because you got like all these different people on set that help you make you feel safe, and then like Michael would do like the stunt like stunts with me. He's like, oh, if I can do it, then. Smashes his head and I'm like, okay, then I'll do it. <laughs> <laughs> and then it's like, yeah, but um, I mean, he does stunts all the time. He runs in glass walls and everything. So I mean, <laughs> if I can, <laughs> so I can like do something, then yeah. Yeah, stunt, flip on the table. Yeah, yeah. do a flip. <laughs> <laughs> I can do that little head, but I, I still don't know how to do it. Oh. Oh, the hell? Oh, yeah, Joe was very, very, yeah. He had a lot of physical scenes and he did all his own stunts and it was, yeah, very incredible. Game. And Sophie had some pretty intimidating scenes and mm, yes. Yeah. Sophie, Sophie went there and, and pushed herself oh, and there was like, yeah, there's a scene when she's sort of punishing herself a little bit and she committed and was, yeah, it was very, very full on on set. Yeah, you are, you are, I've, yeah, you are so committed. <laughs> I do feel like we all kind of followed Soph's lead in that way. Like I 
was shit scared when I read the script and I was like, oh man, this is gonna be so embarrassing. <laughs> you know, as an actor, you're like, ah. <laughs> um, and then I think like, cause I, my first day on set was your possession. first possession. And I think you just like set the tone. Everyone was like, okay, like that's where we're going. And I think like we kind of needed Soph to commit and then everyone kind of saw what they needed to yeah. match. And I think that's how yeah. we all got up there, you know? Thank you. Your lead is it's true. You set the tone, I get it. Kind of some questions just for fun here. Everyone can feel free to jump in on these. Let's say you find an embalmed hand that gives you the ability to contact spirits. Who in your life is the first person you go and run and tell about it? And they actually believe you when you tell them. Oh my gosh, Michael. <laughs> that makes sense. That uh, was Michael, too easy the camera for you. Out. <laughs> I definitely, yeah, I definitely yeah. wouldn't believe him though. Yeah, no. <laughs> well, I found this. Oh, shut up. <laughs> Who else has someone? Uh, um, like probably my sister, because she's a bit older than me. She's like 25, so it's like I just tell her everything. So probably my sister. Actually, no, she wouldn't believe me. Never mind. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. My therapist. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I would contact Miranda Otto and tell her about it. <laughs> I will oh, con contact oh, Miranda. 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 Oh, 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 oh. I would just yeah. <laughs> any excuse to be able to call Miranda. <laughs> hey Miranda, I found a hand. Want to hang out? <laughs> <laughs> One thing I was kind of curious about: what do you think would happen if your character encountered the hand? Would she would she dare to do it? I. I from an actor's point of view, I would like that she would dare to do it. Like, I would like yeah. to do it. Yeah. Um, but, you know, like, Sue's pretty canny. Like, she, she's pretty pragmatic. So whether she would, I don't know. But it'd be fun to force a situation where she did. Like, it'd be fun to play. <laughs> yeah. Like, everyone wants to, like, lose their shit a bit, you know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Sequel question mark? <laughs> well, it's been set at the table. Oh! oh. oh. That is all. Collider awesome. gods, please! <laughs> sequel! You know what we do here. You know what? This is secret water that makes everything happen. Oh. <laughs> Let's have a little sip of that. <laughs> two, two more fun questions. Of everyone in this cast, who would you think would be the very first one to actually step up and be willing to use the hand Chris. in real life? Chris. 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 Oh, Chris. Yeah. Chris. 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 Chris ran away from the interview, but Chris. Oh, yeah. Chris. 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 Chris, get in here. Run. Run. Run, Chris. Run, Run Chris. Chris. Run. Chris. Run. Run. This man would do it first, <laughs> I swear. Take it. You would Come here. Here. Who would be first? Standing would you or would you not, sir, do the hand first out of all of us? Do the hand now? Yeah. yeah. Give me the hand. <laughs> 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 Oh, we should have brought the hand. Oh, we should have. You can go now. We said last <laughs> night in oh, the. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, anyone want to come <laughs> and see you? Or? <laughs> <laughs> I can only hear that, Chris. You've had your moment. We said <laughs> last <laughs> night in the Q and A, we've got all the hands here. There's like I don't know a bunch of them, and we've just hidden them. People have just yep. hidden them throughout our lodge, um, and in different places. And so like I went to do a wee the other day and the toilet paper was just on the hand. Um, they're just, yeah, strewn about the house. It's pretty camp. There's a big moose head in the living room and our behind the scenes guy climbed up and just plopped, plopped it on top. Yeah. That's why we didn't, and some of them are living by themselves. Oh. And actually, some of them are actually missing, so we should find those hands. Yeah. <laughs> you know, that's why we, we would have bring a hand here, but they're in impossible places to reach right now. Yeah. yeah. It was funny at first, but now we don't have the hand here. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. I. I would be tempted, and then deep down I know I would do it. Can't help it. Yeah. I like these concepts. Um, I have to let you go soon. I did want to end on one unrelated question, because Zoe, I'm very excited for what's around the corner for you right now. <laughs> it, it is a big deal. You should be very proud, and I know there's a lot of people who can't wait to see you in the MCU. What does joining the MCU mean to you personally, but also what kind of influence do you want to have on that franchise? That's a great question. Um, I think... I, I was talking about this yesterday, actually. I think as trans people, you're kind of, I mean, growing up, I didn't get to see myself anywhere, so I didn't really know that I existed, and especially not as a, in a superhero show <laughs> or movie, I think. Um, and so I think I just feel deeply grateful and moved that um, little trans kids and trans teens have something to look at and to know they exist and to know that you know, they can have superpowers and that, you know, like we, that's where we belong. We don't just belong in trauma stories on the fringes, dying in things, you know, like we, we belong there with the big guys. So 
yeah, it, it meant a lot to me. I cannot wait Aww. to see. I cannot wait to see everything all of you do in the future. But in the meantime, I will watch and rewatch this movie. I am obsessed with this idea. Your performances are incredible. I can't say enough good things about Talk to Me. Congratulations. Thanks so much. Thank you. Awesome.